Hi, welcome to the Craft Channel. My name is Corin Brad, and today what I'd like to do is show you how to make some cute little baby hedgehogs with plastic pom pom makers. They're very easy to make, so we'll get started. If you use a larger size pom pom maker, now this is about a seven centimetre in diameter, open up the hinges so you have a W shape, and you can hold together with one hand while you take your yarn with the other. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a pom-pom with a white face. So we'll start by winding white yarn around the middle of one section of your pom-pom maker. I've said this before, don't wind these lower sections too tightly because what happens is as you build up your yarn, you'll find that the circumference of the pom-pom maker gets bigger and your yarn lengths get longer. So if you've wound it really tight in the middle and then it ends up being loose around the outside, you'll end up with a strange oval shaped hedgehog, which is not what you want. And I would say you want about 100 wraps, maybe 75 wraps of the paler color in the center just to make his face. So that would do for him. Let's trim that off. Um, let's use a grey yarn. So this is his face. Ooh. Then you need to build up his body Ooh. around the outside. Again, do the lower layers fairly loosely. Not so loose that they fall off the pom pom maker, of course. Build it up on one side. Go over the face part to build it up on the other side, like so. And we want a nice fluffy hedgehog, so you can wind quite a lot of yarn onto this, but not so fat that you can't close the pom-pom maker afterwards. And then I'm just going to give it a nice even coverage around the face. So what should happen is when you trim this pom-pom, it should be surrounded by grey prickles. Move the yarn to the other half of the pom-pom maker and wind it as you normally would. So I'm going to do this one really quickly. And this should be enough now. Close your pom-pom maker up and just use the two latches on the side to keep it closed in a donut shape. And trim the end of your yarn. Just move that ball out of the way. And then cut yourself a decent length to tie around the middle of the pom-pom. Don't be stingy because if you pull it too tight you do risk breaking it and you want to wrap it several times around there. Now I'm just going to clip my pom-pom so if you hold the pom-pom here like this it will stop the yarn shifting as you're chopping don't forget to clip that loop where you've gone from one side of the pom-pom maker to the other and again just put your fingers in there And then if you lay it down on your tabletop and put your tying st string in between the gaps of the pom-pom maker, bring it around to the other side and cross it over. Don't pull it too tight yet, but do it again before you tie your knot. So you've got a double or even a treble wrap around the centre of it. And then just don't be tempted to yank it because that's when problems will occur. Just gently pull it and it will tighten it up and tighten it up. And because you've got two wraps on there, it won't immediately loosen when you let go of the pressure on the string. We'll put another knot here. And then we'll just tie it in a securing knot. I'm just 
going to do another one just for luck on the other side. And leave those long ends attached. I'll show you why in a minute. If you unclip the white clips on your pom-pom maker and open it out like so, give it a good shake. And you can see now you've got a grey pom-pom with a white middle. Now what I want to do is I want to trim that white middle down a little bit so that it's shorter than all the rest of the hairs or the, the prickles of the hedgehog. So this does take a little bit of time, but you want to try and grasp that pom-pom around the middle with one hand so you're holding all the grey yarn away and all the white yarn is sticking up Let's pop them down there like that you don't have to be incredibly precise but it's one of those things if you're going to make something then make it to the best of your ability and uh, it does look so much better if you've got a nice a longer ring of hair hair prickles around the outside of your hedgehog's face so you've got in effect like a big fluffy tassel here which I'm now going to give a good haircut to and I'm gonna cut I'm gonna be quite ruthless here I've cut a good five mil Yeah, cut a good five mil from the face. Ooh. And I'm using a big pair of dressmaking shears here. Just really use whatever scissors you like, but I sometimes find you've actually got more control with these. So that's cut it shorter, but then also what I want to do is I want to cut almost like a point into it. So let's just trim out this bit here, because this is where the eyes will go. Now, if you give them another shake and subsequently blow all your little bits of wool trimmings all over the floor, oh, I've lost my bin. <laughs> so you've got like a, a point almost here, which will become the end of his nose and then I'm just going to trim up his prickles and so you'll notice when you're making these pom-poms that some ends will be longer than others that's where the tension of where you've wound it hasn't been consistent all the way through it because obviously if you're pulling yarn taut it will stretch but as soon as you trim it again it springs back to its normal height and this is the reason why I keep the long ends because you can shake it out to get a nice finish on it. And then we'll just make a couple of little tiny ears. I've got some pink felt here. And we'll cut out two little half moon shapes. It helps if you cut the ears out together because then you know they're exactly the same size. The number of soft toys I've made with lopsided faces simply because I've not followed a seam allowance or I've drawn around a shape with a different thickness of pen. You know, all the ridiculous stuff that you don't think about until it's the finished object and you look at it and you think, well, that doesn't quite look right. Part your hedgehog's hair, as it were, between his face and his prickles and just run a bit of fabric glue along the bottom of your ear and pop it in there. And again, for the other side of his face. and then close up the yarn around it to hold it in place. And I'm just gonna... There you go. That's 
better. And then if you form his nose into a point, oh look, there's a bit of face there that's too long. And then I've made eyes and a nose. Now the, the eyes that I've used in these hedgehogs are um, plastic safety eyes. And they are simply, you glue the shank of them and push them in place. The nose is made with a small bead on a piece of wire. I will show you how. Forest wire and a small, this is a five mil bead. Pop it onto the wire and bend it down into a, like a horseshoe shape around the bead. And then if you grasp the end, or both ends of the wire, and then just twist this bead to hold it in place on a shank. And bear in mind, if you're going to make eyes like these, it will purely be for decorative pur um, purposes. Don't give it to a very young child because they could pull it out, which is why safety eyes would be a better option. And then decide where you want to put your eyes. And I'm going to put them here. So just part your yarn on either side. I don't want his eyes to be too close together, actually. Bit of glue on the stem of the eye and pop it in and close the yarn up around it. Again on here. And close it around it. And then you want one more. I'm going to give this hedgehog a little black nose. And his nose can go right at the tip of the longest part of the face. And don't push it in too hard because, you know, hedgehogs have got quite cute little pointy faces. And there you go. Just going to chop off his extra long tail and clear my rubbish and then just trim off that forelock there you go cute little baby hedgehog to go with his friends And you can make them in any colour you like, but I would suggest you use a lighter colour for the face because that would be more natural. So I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. I hope it makes you uh, see how easy it is to use this type of pom-pom maker. Um, saves so much time and effort. And if you'd like information where to get hold of them, please check the description below. And we will see you next time. Thanks. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by the Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.